Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to Porsche Land. We just got back um, late last night from Players Show. Fantastic show, great time. The Lamborghini One car of the show, so thank you very much to the guys for that. And uh, huge thanks to everybody that came and said hello and uh, tagged me in all the photos of the Lamborghini and everything. Absolutely blown away. Really, really happy. Anyway, on to the job at hand. The Monday, miserable Monday job at hand. It's not that bad. It's not that bad because it's an old beetle basically, isn't it? It's very beetle. We are going to take the engine and gearbox out of my 964 turbo. We put this into caller back on obviously to show you guys at, at uh, players or what you could see through through the deck lid, which is not a lot, but um, yeah, we're going to have to remove that very carefully again. You did, you weren't here to witness how fun that was to put back on. I'm glad I missed it. My God. <laughs> I mean, I had to do some slight adjustment stuff, but uh, I think genuinely 45 minutes it took me to get the Wiggins I lined up. I was just thinking about that last time. And that, oh, no, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I did those up, but not all the way, don't worry. Yeah. So yeah, I had to uh, like, realign stuff there, but um, you know, I'm sure I'll get better at it, but that was with, you know, silicon grease on it, all lubed up nicely. What a nightmare they are. <laughs> Sure, I'll get better, but you know. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's uh, get the intercooler off, get that stored somewhere nicely, and then just simply drop an engine and gearbox onto a table. Messing about, well, a little bit of messing about. Jay, what happened to your hair? People are gonna ask. I got round to it. <laughs> <laughs> Finished my car enough to ask my wife to cut my hair. Nice. Yeah. Do you like undoing all the hard work we just recently did? Well, at least we know it comes apart. <laughs> yeah, at least we know no, no bolts are rusty. Yeah, well, so far. Yeah. And we're starting as we mean to go. I'm making a mess, you know. Uh, just uh, draining the power steering here. I actually think I'm probably going to um, change the power steering to um, electric power steering, just electric power steering pump, not on the column or anything like we did on the E30. Probably going to use the Mercedes A class pump that everybody uses. Uh, I've seen that on a build project that I've been meaning to recommend to you for some time because it's absolutely awesome. And nothing to do with our channel, just somebody who I've watched, uh, because I do like watching builds on YouTube myself. Um, and it was actually one of our subscribers who said, have you checked them out? Um, so I went and checked them out, and honestly, blown away with some of the work. So the guy is called I Island Work Sweden. Uh, he's building a 964. He's chasing like a really lightweight track car, and some of the 3D printing work that he does um, prototyping work is absolutely amazing. Um, really, really top level stuff, but the channel just doesn't get views because YouTube's really mean like that nowadays. So yeah, I seriously recommend that after this video, you go and check out these guys and um, watch the whole series on the uh, on the 964 build. It's um, these guys, I'm not sure whether you can see here, but yeah, Island Works Sweden. Highly recommended, do enjoy. Gotcha, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we found an issue. I'm not going to say it wasn't a concern. Yeah, it's, a, it's something that we actually checked already, but... We we'll tried to. Yeah, well. There is our number six problem. So... We just had was, a massive air leak. Yeah. So we did wonder whether this was possibly something that had happened and why we were getting issues with cylinder six. Um, and what did we do? We we basically removed the injector and we poked something down here to make sure that was make yeah. sure it's got clearance because we thought maybe the um, gasket is actually overlapping where the injector is and not allowing it to spray properly. But no, 
What it looks like happened is it's just been bolted up. Um, these things are a right faff, by the way. These uh, these are isolator blocks. They're plastic, and they're basically made to stop the um, engine block or engine head um, transmitting heat into the inlet because these cars are super sensitive to that being entirely air cooled. So uh, yeah, that basically looks like our issue. We've got new gas gaskets, but it just looks like as it's been put in the inlet, the gasket's been pushed to the side, slightly bolted up, and part of the gasket's disappeared down into the inlet. I'm sure it went on fire. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it was uh, burnt up in a you know nice sacrificial way. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. It's a bit of a pisser that it was something you know relatively basic like that but equally it means that we don't have a serious issue with this cylinder or a serious issue with the ecu or anything like that so move forward just make sure we don't do it again and it's a good opportunity to have a look at some of the fancy porting on this premier engine so we'll be investigating further as we go along obviously as it's coming apart matt from fernsport will be um investigating what we've got in here um and do I guess kind of what sort of power it's possibly going to be capable of and um, I'm going to try not to get too carried away and upgrade too much. You know you're going to have to buy a new turbo. Piss off. You know you're it's time it's time to do that thing where we drop an engine it's normally lifting an engine but we drop an engine and just pull all the wires and everything yeah see what we left connected yeah you pull it and see technique yeah so we've got a nice sturdy table we're going to lower the car on the ramp onto that and then we've essentially got four bolts left that we undo hopefully leave the engine and gearbox on the table and then we'll have a few things to sort like the clutch slave cylinder on top of the gearbox just we want a bit more room to work to remove that but yeah we're ready i'm gonna click down a little bit i'll just uh plonk this here Okay, everything's free. Jay's a happy man. <laughs> we haven't broken anything yet. No, not yet. Touch wood. There we go. One funny looking engine. Not used to working on air cold, not used to working on flat six or flat anything motors really. Although you did once do your wife's Beetle engine, did you? didn't you? On the driveway at your nan's, was it? No, it was in your old workshop. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh down. yeah, I remember. Russ Bucket. Yeah, break right down my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. I guess we probably need to kind of disassemble as much as we can. The, I don't know what it's called, but the thing that separates the tins, top and bottom. They bottom call it tins on hole. a beetle, don't they? Do they? So let's call it tins. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the tins off. We're going to have to actually remake a little bit of here, of it here, because um, the intercooler is here, and before the Promodet version had the intake for the turbo coming up through here as well, hence the massive gap. So while we're here, we'll probably be doing more than one or two little things to improve stuff. And cleaning everything. Yeah. I do want to get this dry ice blasted. Um, I've been trying to get through to a company in Birmingham, around the corner from us, for quite a while um, regarding it. Finally got through this morning, and it looks like they're going to come and have a look at it tomorrow and see whether we can um, get anything done. Sort of quick, smart, because I want to get it to Matt at Fernsport as soon as possible, so we know what bits we need to order um, to start looking at fixing it, slash maybe improving it a little bit. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, we'll keep you up to date. 
Thursday morning. Big rig out. And we're off to see what this dry ice blasting is all about. Fancy clean stuff. As you can see, the engine is in quite good company here. Uh, welcome to Fernsport. This is uh, Fernsport and Silverstone. Um, Matt here has had a quick look over the engine. We just whipped it out the back of uh, Chevy Menage. And uh, we've just had a quick chat on what the plans should be, both on exactly the same page. So what we're gonna do is essentially strip it down completely. We do, in theory, only have a problem with the potentially the valve or cylinder head on cylinder number three here. However, while we're here, got the engine out of the car, uh, it's here on a stand, we might as well take it apart fully, see what's going on on the inside, because it's still an unknown quantity. It is still, I don't know exactly what the spec of the engine is inside. I know all of you will be getting massively distracted by that. How cool is that? <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this. The um, yeah, we're going to completely disassemble it. Uh, we're going to have a look at what the condition of the bearings are, what actual rods it's got in it, because I think it's got stock rods, forged pistons, as it's a Promodet build. I did have um, one of my friends from Work Wheels in Japan um, had multiple attempted conversations with Koman San at Promodet. Um, it's really bizarre. He actually really struggled with the language. There's apparently, even though he's Japanese and talking to another Japanese person, there's a regional dialect uh, issue, and he couldn't entirely understand what it was that Kaman San was saying the full spec of this was likely to be. And also, on the other side of that, he will have built so many engines over the years, it's not likely he's going to exactly remember the engine that was in this car when he's not seen it for so long. So, yeah. Pull it apart, investigate what parts are in it, investigate condition of all parts, measure bores, see what the issue is with cylinder number uh, three and that valve, see whether something went through it when, I don't know whether you remember, but my, the old turbo that came on the car and the compressor wheel was very poorly, like something had potentially gone through it. So whether that same thing's then gone through, damaged the exhaust valve here, that's the working theory at the moment. Um, I was going to see whether we could actually pull that cylinder off while I was here, but Matt wants to spend some time measuring the base timing and cam timing and everything uh, before pulling everything apart. It will be done absolutely meticulously, as you can probably see by the level of equipment in this workshop. He kind of knows what he's doing, and you'll probably see. He's quite experienced in the old Porsche game as well. Um, so yeah, that's probably about it really. Uh, I'm going to end that episode here. 
I've asked Matt if he can potentially take some pictures, maybe some videos of what he's doing as he, ta as he takes it apart. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed there's nothing too serious and fingers crossed we don't come up with too many ideas of how to get too carried away with improvements because if it has got stock rods, I might change them. Um, but let's see, that's for next time. We'll keep you up to date anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching, thank you for subscribing and yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.